All right, chat. It's time to update the healer tier list. Sorry, DPS tier list. Last week we updated it. If you guys haven't seen last last week video, you should definitely check it out. Or if you haven't seen, I guess the highlight tool on online events or uh, Discord, you should check it out because we covered a lot of classes last week. Now, what happened between last week and this week are a lot of changes on behalf of a, a lot of classes. Um, I guess the most, the, the biggest change out of every single DPS out there was on Rogue. I do not know why was Rogue buffed, but Outlaw, Sub Rogue, and Nasa Rogue were buffed. Those three classes were buffed. Fury Warrior got some buffs. Affleck got some buffs, quality of life changes. Demolock, kind of net neutral, mostly nurse, I guess. Um... Shaman, Ellie Shaman got small nerfs, very small nerfs, and Hanser very, very, very small nerfs, I guess, like, fixes, question mark. Wind Walker got a lot of buffs, DH got some nerfs, and I think, oh, Devastation Evoker got some, uh, got some buffs, Shadow Priest some nerfs, I think that's everything, right? Uh, yeah, that's, I think that was everything. Yeah. So Ellie Shaman got some nerfs, yes. Alright, let's begin. First of all, uh, as you guys have already seen, there is no D tier anymore, chat. There is no D tier. We had one D tier to be tested. That was the uh, Death Evoker. I have tested enough Death Evoker off stream. And I think I'm confident where they are right now. Uh, in terms of placement. Now, the only class... Actually, let's just begin with C tier. Now, what's happening in C tier? C tier are classes that are currently uh, underperforming, and I would probably love to see them getting uh, massive buffs or reworked to some extent, or maybe tier set adjustments, anything to help them improve rankings and jump. Okay, let's begin. First thing first, I guess this is like the most uh, C tier. MM Hunter first in line. Now, why is MM Hunter sit here? I think overall output. The only thing that holds them right now is just output. It feels right now they probably have one of the lowest output of, across all classes, which is disturbing. Not the lowest, but like one of the lowest. And that combined with poor defensives, which makes it not great either. The only salvation for this pack right now is just for the buffs. I think single target adjustments is something that they would like the most, especially given how dominant the tier set is for like AoE. If they add the tier set to be a bit more ST orientated, or at least give them some ST buffs, then I'll be happy. Or any buffs in general, I'll be I'll be happy to to get them. Right now, MM is sit here with the possibility to climb higher if given the right circumstances. Um, next in line is a spec that I hate myself. Mm. Next in line, Destrolock. I would like to say that I'm extremely disappointed with how Destrolock is. They have not touched Destrolock. They have not buffed Destrolock. They haven't mentioned anywhere Destrolock in a while. The last change we got here is the Big Inferno buff, which makes it again pretty good. Uh, when it comes down to like actual output during cooldowns, you're amazing. As everybody knows, during Inferno you do good damage. However, outside of Inferno you do piss damage, especially for like low to mid keys where you don't have that burst, you do below tank damage. If anybody has ever tried to play on PTR Destrolock uh, in lower keys, in a 15 key, non fortified, you will do zero damage during off cooldowns, which is very, very, very disturbing. I would like to see uh, some ad adjustments on that behalf again. When 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 things when things are when things are straight for them, I would like to see some adjustments here. Um, some of the classes, no, I think I think out of cities, Destro does the least out of any class in my opinion. It's really bad. Like unless you're pulling like a lot of mobs so they can get the best out of Rain of Fire. Like I'm talking about like Masewi, sure, but I think overall we do really bad. You know, uh, 
Nah, I think I think Kinder, you're definitely wrong here. DK, Windwalker, Red, they, they are 10 times better than Deathstroke. The only class that can, that comes closer to Destro doing outside of city's damage is probably Death Invoker. Outside of their major cooldown. Just because the whole tier set that surrounds their... You know. but damage is not the only value, I agree with you. But I think damage is like the, the driven factor of like everything. But yes, damage, utility... Survivability, mobility, self-sustain matters, of course, but I think damage is like the driving factor. Um, Dev Evoker, Dev Evoker is next in line. I believe Dev Evoker, in my opinion, is one of the better classes for raiding. In Mythic Plus, however, the design is really poor. The utility is there and the duplicate is there. However, I feel like... You have to play with the pre-made group to make the most out of it. This feels like a pretty nerfed Unholy DK. You do a lot of damage during cooldowns because your whole set surrounds cooldowns, but outside of that, you do pretty poorly. Like, honestly, pretty poorly. Which is something that I would like to see them, you know, being adjusted and potentially uh, distributed more evenly in a sense of like having more damage outside of the major cooldown. Um, again, fantastic spec for rating, Mythic Plus, very, very poor design. Especially given the fact that augmentation is so good, you are very unlikely to bring uh, Devastation to Mythic Plus and pretty much most of the time. So yeah, I'm very disappointed with Devastation Walker. So that's something that I don't think people will be able to play if Aug is uh, that, that good. Next, next line, I think this is the biggest downgrade I've seen in a long time. And it's a quite a big uh, disappointment. Shadow Priest. Shadow Priest, boys, I think this is this is the spec that previously has been and is the king on live servers. On PTR, Mythic Plus, absolutely terrible spec. Uh, they've been nerfed three times in a row already. And I think the overall output is the only thing that brings them back. Again, single target, two target, great damage, amazing. AoE, everything else, pretty dog shit, which is something to consider. And they are better in raiding than they are in Mythic Plus. I could say that the same thing for Death Evoker and also Destrolock, probably. Mythic Plus wise, Shadow Priest is extremely poor right now, performance wise, which is something that I, I don't like to see. Uh, but I'm just here to report the results and you know give you my opinion. The only salvation for the spec is just raw damage buffs to um, the abilities, especially in AoE. Somehow they gotta make it work. Somehow. <clears throat> yeah. Very, very disappointed by the way, by this by this pick. I expected a lot more from Shadow Priest. Uh, going from the being the king last season to being now so bad, especially even, even season 1. S1, S2 the king to going to be like one of the worst classes in season 3 is very disappointing it must be it must be feeling pretty bad for like all shadow priest mains fact to fact so um all right next in line boys it's gonna be frost decay and btr now frost decay in my opinion does amazing a lot better than uh than you know i guess it's it's hard to say than before i feel like you're kind of similar in terms of power than before because they haven't changed anything th this week you know and they already spoke about frost decay next week um but i believe frost decay is, is definitely a solid solid option if you're playing uh mid to low keys just because of their front load burst which is the biggest asset for them they can snipe the damage um now this pick can go a lot higher depending on a new legendary which i don't take the lego into account so that lego could could or could not you know pretty much like drive them higher in terms of like rankings but i think i think only only time is going to truly tell us how good that spec would be you know um just because if they get really good legendary then they could go a little higher than bit here they could go like up to here or maybe even here uh but overall performance right now I'm feeling okay uh however not enough output to be considered anywhere higher again one of the few specs that can have a cr obviously are you also pretty tanky? Um, utility wise, you're okay, nothing crazy, you're okay. Um, but yeah, I think uh, 
I like where they are, and I don't. I think you're better than some classes, but not the best. Also, in my opinion, Unholy is better than, than Frost Decay, meaning you're unlikely to see Frost Decay as much as uh, Unholy, unless you're die hard. Fun. Afrilok next in line, although Afrilok got some buffs. I still believe that you are not really up to par with most of the classes. You're behind, especially when it comes down to burst damage. I feel like, I feel like, with like first of all, I feel like sh sh like Afterlock does not have a major cooldown. Your data clear is so bad that it doesn't really matter, right? Your ramp up damage is also like slower than other classes, just because you don't have like instant damage, but your like sustain is good. Which I, I like pretty much. However, good survivability, good ST as well. Everything else is kind of spiral, spiral, you know, downwards. I don't, I don't like the way they feel. I don't like the output they do. And the only salvation for them, the only, the only buff they need, they need right now is just more damage. That is the only thing, the only thing that can help them right now. Just more dump. Um, I will be happy if, for example, Afli is like Rage Pack and Demo is like Mythic Plus Pack, they'll be happy. But right now, Afli is feeling okay, but not great to be considered A plus tier. Uh, I, I see that we have will get fixed. I'm gonna put here only one spec, Arms Warrior. Although Arms is currently amazing, in my opinion, in Mythic Plus, I think they're gonna get reworked. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're gonna get reworked, or at least changed to some extent. Right now, they have a lot of tools that they cannot spend. Like, excess amount of rage cannot be converted into damage most of the time, which is really, really surprising. And also the fact that we don't know if that's intended or not. The playstyle is very gimmicky, very weird. So I, I'm like 99% sure they would work arms or at least give them some kind of like fix on that behalf. Because it just doesn't make any sense the way you play right now but if i have to judge right if i have to judge right now arms warrior i would say you're probably within an eight year you're probably within an eight year a a plus i guess ish um which i think it's fair enough for like most people the the thing i like about arms is like the amount of burst though the amount of burst is like very good from arms warrior so given the fact that is so good it can fluctuate in rankings depending on a key level. Do you feel like Afwood will perform higher in the higher keys? Yes. I think the higher the key goes, the better Af can become, especially when it can sustain your damage with dots. 100 percent I don't think you have a lot I don't think you have like a long ramp time, but it's like your performance will be significantly better on the high keys than the low keys. 100 percent Some classes are like that. Same thing about uh, same thing about Destro. The reverse thing, for example, is something like Windwalker or Frost Decay or MM, they'll be better on low keys to mid keys. Yes, Avril went from C to B tier, definitely some buffs from, from last time, but it's again not, not good enough to jump to A tier, 100%. But it's still a solid one. They rework expect to be good Shadow Priest and it completely destroyed the next season. Shadow Priest, right now, once again, it feels good in raiding, but I think overall it's just. Yeah, not there. Um, <clears throat> all right, boys, let's do one more spec and I'm going to take a small break because my, my voice is starting to crack. Um, what is the spec, guys, do you think is going to come after the uh, after lock? You guys are actually, you guys are actually on point. Holy shit. It's actually Monk. What the fuck? How, how did you guys know? It's actually Monk. You know, I'm actually very, very surprised about Monk. Monk became from C tier to B tier. Monk became from dog shit to actually pretty good. I mean, pretty good is overstatement, but I guess average. Um, so, Monk got buffed, 4 piece got buffed, and some of the toolkit also got buffed, um, especially core abilities. So, I feel like definitely deserves to be bit here, given the fact how strong their burst damage is. Um, so, I think if you are with Moker, obviously, you shouldn't be as happy because there are a lot of classes that are better than you. But it's a small victory, small W. Uh, quite good burst damage, as I already mentioned, paired with uh, a good amount of group utility, and you're pretty tanky as well. Now, one thing that could change about with Moker is technically give them a better tier set, or just give them more damage, which I believe uh, it's the case for like mostly all DPS classes right now. Overall, I think if you're playing low to mid keys, the, the fact that you have so good burst damage can give you the A tier, legit. 
if you're playing low keys to mid keys, you can give it the eight tier just because of your high front load burst. You can smoke a pack before anybody comes close to your DPS. The problem is, next pack you, you, you would not do anything. But your cooldowns are very, very short, so it doesn't really matter. You can do that every second pack, for example. So yeah, this is, some, this is something that I would like to see on, on uh, Woodmoker. Further buffs to the spec to supply higher position. But I think for now, BTR is definitely fair. Alright boys, next in line is gonna be... Pa, 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 Fury Warrior. You guys, you guys guessed it correctly, by the way. You guys are pretty good at it, what the fuck? Okay, so what happened that Fury Warrior became from C tier to B tier last season? Sorry, last week? I think the biggest upgrade here for Fury Warrior is they got uh, improvements the damage department uh, a lot of things have been changed in terms of like quality of life updates uh generally now it should feel better it'll do more damage which is you know, the biggest argument always for fury warriors since they are not they are not known for anything else just do damage if the utility package is pretty limited to fury warrior given the fact that if melee becomes obviously meta if fury can be a lot more appealing just because of, of the uh, battle shout is to have if not the only dps with the external defensive cooldown rallying cry Unless you count Alkivokers, I guess. Um, Overly pretty tanky, solid DPS choice. After the most recent change, it's now a lot better. So I think you are, in my opinion, the best spec in uh, B tier. I don't think anybody else comes close to B tier uh, from A tier. I think you're the best with the, with the Windwalker Monk from the B tier. And I think you're going to be also be used on high keys. Now, the other argument here is I'm leaving the possibility of this door open for Fury Warrior because if the legendary is really, really good and is farmable, easy farmable, then imagine having double legendary weapons on the Fury Warrior is going to be absolutely insane. Maybe I'm just coping, I don't know. But I think the legendary is something to, to I don't know, to consider. Fury said God Hotfix literally did nothing for the rotation because we'll still use Avatar after one second of audience fury that, that expires and the recklessness the reckless abandon change did not make impact like the death note said it would. Interesting. It's very, very bad. Uh, yeah, I think so too. I think Lego is gonna be a, a unique equipped. I don't think they have they have announced that though. You know, that's the thing that we don't know. Is it gonna be is it not gonna be uh it's gonna be kind of silly if they do it, but you know, maybe they'll allow it. Who knows? I think time is gonna tell. But I think that's why, that's why I'm so hopeful uh, of those classes, though. That's why I'm I'm shilling so much like Arms and Fury and like Unholy Decay, Frost Decay, you know, because like they have a, they have like a pickpocket in, in the hand, right? So in case something goes wrong, hey, have Lego at least, you know. I think I should be better. I think I should be better. You skip WoW and move to another game. Hey, what? Hold on. I think you, are you saying that I should skip WoW and play another game? Or do you mean like you want to skip WoW and play another game? If anything, I think they are... They will go to double Jadis. The thing is like Jadis wasn't legendary. So you could you could have double Jadis. <clears throat> yeah, KR sort of is also pretty good. Alright boys, let's go Let's go move forward. What is the next pick in line 8 here? I think it's going to be easily Demolog. Now, a lot of people speculate that whether or not Demonok should drop out of 8 tier because of the most recent changes. And although they were mid tier 8 tier last week, I believe that they should still be in 8 tier. I think their overall package is amazing for Mythic Plus, from overall DPS to good uh, utility uh, and survivability. I think Demonok can definitely be a class where it can make up to the conversation to be part of the 8 tier. The only difference that I don't like right now between. I guess Demo now and Demo last week is the so many nerfs on a four piece though. The four piece got changed to different procs, to reverse procs, to nerf to the damage. A lot of things are necessary, but at the end of the day, uh, Demo looks too strong, especially if you're playing like higher keys. Like, I definitely am liking Demo. I don't think you're stronger to, to like, be placed anywhere higher you know but i think the end of a tier or maybe top of b tier could make the most sense i think you deserve to be in a end of the a tier still a tier that's what i think about you're the best you know i think um 
I think you are the best, in my opinion, uh, lock spec right now in Mythic Blood. Which, it's it's still good. I mean, being in A tier means like you're definitely, you know, with anything above, anything on A tier and above A tier means like it, it's pretty, pretty good. Now, why did Frostmage went from B tier last, uh, last week to like A tier right now? So, Frostmage jumped few spaces because of the evaluation. Uh, pretty much calculating how, how how strong Frost would be. I think genuinely right now, um, you are overall pretty solid in all, uh, in pretty much all departments. Obviously, neither of the, of the departments you have is overpowered, except the defensiveness, which is, again, extremely strong if you're a Frost Mage. You're pretty tanky, you'll be pretty happy about that one. But I don't think your damage profile is crazy good. I think it's good, but it's not crazy good, which makes you uh, okay. Um, the fact that you have Perma Slow can be a lot of... Uh, have a lot of usefulness especially if you are um tanking dungeons with the high fortified mobs that are really hard for you so that could make a lot of uh, helpful encounters because you have frost mage but i think overall the only thing that would pull ahead on frost mage is pretty much like more damage overall the four piece and two piece of this season it's kind of the same as last season i think i mean except that now it's glacial spike orientated which is Fine. Overall, pretty boring to play in my opinion, but it's still strong. In my opinion, Ellie Shaman. Now, listen to me. Ellie, after the most recent changes, definitely lost some value, especially in the uptime of the haze buff. And I feel like that made them more impactful than before. Oh, I'm serious. Now, Ellie last week, I think it was like few spots ahead than this week like it's, i believe two spots ahead but i believe that the end of the a tier is where it belongs copium it, it is true it is no copium it is true i mean i'm trying to be true with you guys um the output is the only question mark i feel like if they if they buff earthquakes and earth shocks i believe that you're gonna be a lot higher than copium right next in line for holy I think Unholy overall performance has definitely increased since last season. The the fact that they, they took some power away from their burst and gave them more sustained damage definitely helped Unholy to close the gap between uh, sustained damage and burst damage. I'm quite happy about that one. You're also pretty tanky, a lot tankier than a lot of classes. And on top of this, utility is also decent. Not the best, not the worst, decent at most. Now one thing that I would like to say about Unholy here is you have a lot of ways to stop a caster, which is very, very caster orientated season it seems like we have a double uh double stun if you play asphyxiation and pet stun uh grips and also kick which is definitely impactful um, a bomb blimp can also stop some cast if needed i think overall holy is a great pickup even if you play in a full puck it don't really matter your damage is still gonna be okay even if you don't have your major cooldowns so i'm happy with, i'm happy with unholy and i think it's well deserved a tier um next in line is gonna be feral druid chat Feral Druid is gonna be next in line, which I think is a great pickup of Feral Druids given the fact how they were previous season. Uh, definitely one of the, the lowest ranked DPSs. Now that they are 8 tier, I think that's definitely a, a solid news for them. Uh, a lot better than they were before. Uh, overall output is okay. Definitely good. Uh, nothing nothing, nothing of a significance of a significance I can say about, res uh, about Feral Druid. You're pretty tanky, good party utility, uh, you do good damage. They're pretty mobile. All of those combined. Your damage, however, is not crazy output, which you know, if you have a, if you had a crazy output, then it'll be a lot higher. Uh your initial ramp up damage can be a little bit slower. So if you're playing like for example uh lower keys, you might get out sniped by other classes uh because they don't burst. Uh but I think the higher the key goes, the better you become just because you can utilize your dots better and obviously targets live longer, so you can do more, more damage. Um, so yeah, the harder key goes, the better you become. I'm happy with with, uh, with with that for now, and I think at the at the top of the eight years where you begin, where you like kind of you know you should remain for now. But I think uh, tuning numbers which will show its true colors and see how exactly uh, this pick will perform. Um, that's about Theodore's rich chat. Next in line is gonna be uh, Survival Hunter. Again, one of the specs that I'm very, very surprised how well they perform. Um, like, it's still, in my opinion, worrying how good survival is. A lot of people have been sleeping on this spec, and I feel like 
this is likely the best version of uh, survival we have seen uh for the past couple of months maybe a year maybe, maybe since the beginning of the expansion uh so i'm quite happy with survival very very high front load front load burst damage which can help a lot in low to mid keys even on high keys is pretty good uh overall defense toolkit is not i'm insane utility is also a eh, it's okay um, but I do like the damage output and I think that you're pretty strong and this is a spec that I personally play myself as an old a very very fun spec to play uh, and if anybody has not played survival out there you want to give it a try go for it I think you're gonna love it um, the only thing that I don't like about survival you're melee yeah uh, being melee as a hunter is kind of weird uh, but I think overall it's pretty strong I like the way you are I love the way you stand and I think that a lot more people uh, would be inclined to give it a try I was still a young man when tear make tear making started, but now my time has come. Goodbye, chat. All right, buddy. You take care of yourself. Thank you for coming. Are you saying you would invite Survival Hunter over Demo LA Frostmage for push keys? Yeah, hundred percent. I think on, on on the highest of the highest keys, I would probably choose to invite Pharaoh and Frostmage better just because of the utility. But depending on the key level, I'm gonna invite Survival. Like you're actually. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people are unaware of survival. Survival is really good though. Like, the damage is really good. I'm not joking. Maybe you haven't seen streams or you haven't seen player play it or you haven't seen me, me testing it. Like, survival is really strong. It's just about the uh, community perception, you know. It's strong right now in terms of... Exactly. And a lot of people don't know. This is like... If you guys remember back in uh, Season 1, Feral Druid. Feral Druid was extremely good in Season 1. Um, however, because people knew how shit they were in Shadowlands, they didn't want to invite them. They don't die until... No, I, I would say you have defensive toolkits to, to handle situations. I mean, you're not, you're not like amazing defensively, but you're not bad. I think you're okay. I mean, immunity, turtle, again, immunity, question mark. You have a survival of fittest, you also have a leech from your pet. Um, so I think overall you're okay. Uh, you're, not, you're not crazy defensively though. Alright boys, next in line after survival is, as many of you have guessed it, Hunter, BM Hunter. I think you're extremely strong right now. Uh, definitely uh, definitely a spec that a lot of people are still sleeping on. on. I think the biggest asset here on BM Hunter is the is the, the massive cooldown that you had. Um, and it gets further amplified by the last to the right capstone which i don't remember the name right now but during cooldowns this spec i don't think anybody could match the, 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 the spec away damage though and maybe some classes can but i think like you are really 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 strong in a way though um given again uncapped away most of the time especially uh with the stomps um uncapped away question mark it's soft capped but um i think overall cooldown usage should be very uh, much included and thought about because if you remember back in the days uh bm did not have a different like strong uh cooldowns now th that's not the case they still have cooldowns they still need some time to ramp up that's why i believe on the lower keys to mid keys they might not be insane uh but i think overall i really like how it floats now if you're playing lower keys mid keys if you're playing like below 20 keys i'll pick survival the higher the key goes i'll pick bm but i think bm is overall stronger a little bit stronger than survival um so yeah it's just like the the ramp up the first five seconds of the fight you gotta you know get your uh stacks up etc to pump damage uh to, to like prelay some so you need like five seconds ish that's why i believe that's gonna be a lot better specs on high keys though <clears throat> um can play the nasty pet for more hp and extra defensive if you're afraid of being one shot on high keys uh, as a BM in survival, yes, you can. Of course, you can. Uh, because given the fact that you play with, like a lot of people saying, this is this is squishy, that is squishy, guys. Hear me out. It doesn't matter how squishy you are if you play with the, the uh, people if you play playing hunter is C tier though. Uh, maybe yeah. Um, like you, like you guys don't understand. Like no matter how squishy you are, if you do a lot of damage, you can play around it. Like augmentation invoker being present gives you damage reduction chat their whole mastery is based on giving you verse that is dr okay so it was like, like augmentation and bogey can make you tanky gives you more versatility it can give you a shield it gives you a zephyr etc you know it's, it's pretty powerful so even if you play with zero verse 
you can still survive a lot of keys just because of Alki Walker. So the argument of X, Y, Z is pretty squishy. It doesn't really matter. It's not to be included in the argument. I mean, it matters, but it's not like relevant as much as DPS, for example. Would you say damage-wise BM is higher placed in the end A? Um, no, I think A is pretty good. I think I think maybe in like you know eight to ten targets max cooldowns maybe. But yeah. There should be a tier above S that just says augmentation. To be honest with you, yeah, maybe maybe you guys are right. Being squishy is a hitter problem. Not really. Hilarious people saying hunter has zero utility. Sure, it's not mage or rogue levels of utility, but. It still brings things to the group. Also, historically, what matters the most in the mythic plus DPS? Yes, Eric is correct. Uh, DPS is the most important driving factor in mythic plus. Utility is also the second most important thing. You know. Uh, I don't agree with the statement that Hunter brings zero utility. I don't agree to that statement. It, you bring some utility, uh, but. Obviously, it's not as impactful as Mage Utility, or a Volker Utility, or Windwalker, Rogue, you know. You you bring some Utility. Not not as good as other spells. Yeah, the class I'm, I'm looking at right now, you guys guessed it correctly. It's a fatty fucking chicken, boys. Chicken be definitely A tier. I believe this class is extremely strong on a high keys so if you're playing let's continue on the forward why is balance root placed in a tier now last time we, we ranked balance it was also in a tier but it was not in the top of the a tier i believe balance root is a class that is significantly versatile against most of the classes and they're a class that you can expect to do extremely well on high end keys especially during cooldowns the sustain damage is also pretty good Utility is amazing, one of the best utilities right now in Mythic Plus. Defensively, we already know that they are okay. They're doing pretty well, especially if they know that upcoming damage is coming to them. The biggest benefit, in my opinion, having balance written in A tier is the, the fact that you have an uncapped AoE, which is a massive bonus in Mythic Plus, and you can pretty much get away with like doing absurd amount of damage when the mobs are not allowed to be stacked. You can tank them the way you want to tank them, run away, kite, don't matter, Balance will do extreme amount of damage. Something that I really like. The biggest disadvantage, and it's something that I don't think you ever get fixed and less more buffs, is single target. Single target, no cooldowns, or even with cooldowns, it's no nothing impressive, and I believe that is exactly something that they would just work on and fix it. It's just because if you go more ST talents, then you lose a lot of AoE. So if you're playing like lower keys, like between 15 keys and below. I think balance becomes right here. If you're playing the lower keys, this is where balance will be ranked. However, for the keys of 20, 20, give or take, the higher the key goes, the better balance can become. And that's why I believe I'm gonna put it on the top of A tier with a very high possibilities of them being right here on top of A plus tier and them being right there, depending on the key level. The way, the way you pull and the way the way the key is. I or low key, balance could be here or here. So I think medium, medium size is gonna be around here, in my opinion. That's where I think the spec is gonna be. At the top of the A tier. And I think it's it's very fair placement for like balance rate. Yeah, exactly. I think single target is the most like questionable thing. I don't even know why or how did they manage to, to do them like that, but their ST is really, uh, I don't know, not really promising in my opinion. Um, but again, there's like a month into the season probably, even more. So I feel like this is something that they could really, really like fix by uh, pushing a hotfix. That's it. As simple as that. Pushing a hotfix here could really help the, the, the class suspect. They won't buff our ST because on our AoE, our spread AoE is too good. I think taking some power away from like AoE and giving it to a single target wouldn't be that bad. They need another CD not tied around in current CA. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, during cooldowns, they're astronomically good. Yeah, sorry, chat. Let's move along. You guys are right. 100%. All right, we are we are deriving from topic, chat. Let's, let's move along. All right. Which classes are A plus tier? 
So I think the natural class that got promoted from A tier to A plus tier, the first pick goes to be Sobrog. Why Sobrog got promoted? Sobrog got some buffs a couple of days ago. That is the sole reason why, why they are A plus right now. Overall, one of the highest utility middle classes in the game. Uh, de defensiveness, I mean, I don't even need to talk about it. Insane, always. Throughout, throughout the whole expansion has been insane. Defensively. Um, damage output is also a lot better now. Good ST, good AoE. Uh, I think the biggest weakness for them is like... I feel like on two targets, it's not really insane. But outside of that, he, everything else is just massive. On and off cooldowns, you do very good consistent damage. Also... It doesn't really matter if you play like 10 targets or 5 targets, it's still gonna do good AoE. Uh, unlike, for example, Outlaw. Outlaw is capped. It's capped most of the time, which is fine. Uh, but I think any Rogue's pick is very solid for A plus tier, so I'm, ca I'm quite happy about him. Uh, Fire Mage and Arcane Mage are next in line for the A plus tier. Now, uh, this is something a lot of people will, be, will feel a high amount of resentment. But I do believe those classes scale infinitely better on high keys compared to low keys. And when I mean high keys, above 20. So if you're playing up until 20 keys or below, you might not want to consider them part of the A plus tier. If you're playing 20 and 20 and above that, I think those two specs are insane. Uh, utility wise, as always, Mage has one of the best utilities in the game, one of the tankiest specs in the game, one of the most mobile specs in the game. Uh, Fire Mage skills insanely well with a with a tier set, meaning that late game you can have a lot of them, especially with a full four piece and max gear. You're gonna do astronomical numbers, and if you pair this with Evoker, those together sync very well. Especially now that this priest is considered one of the better uh, healing classes right now. Pi Oak Evoker, you make the math. You know, makes sense. One plus one makes two. Happened before. We already seen how good they are, and I still think they're gonna be good. That that in mind. Arcade Mage right now, one of the biggest surprises in my opinion, although a hard spec to play, I think if you, if you have a good dungeon knowledge and good uh, knowledge on how to play Arcane properly, you will be absolutely decimating packs. AoE, prior damage, 3 targets, single target, don't really matter, your damage is astronomical, especially I really like Arcane on like 3-4 targets when it's like high prior target, you do absolutely burst one of damage. Um, so I'm quite happy to see Arcane. Uh, up to par with fire, which is something that we haven't seen in a long time. If you're a cane mage main, you'll be very happy how they float. Um, the only difference between those two, obviously, in my opinion, is uh, the fact that fire is a bit more tanky than I can just because of the cheat dead. Uh, so that's you know, small disadvantage. But I believe if you're playing the highest or the highest keys, those two will go hand to hand, likely to be uh, swapped in and out depending on what's what class, I guess, what dungeon you're playing, or like what group comp you're playing. So, if this priest and if this priest of holy power then becomes meta, or we have something like Vengeance DH, or something like Augmentation Evoker, then those two, in my opinion, will remain A plus tier. Definitely. Can you explain how Fire Mage scales further in the game with, with uh, his tier sets? I've never understand this. Okay, so. The tier set gives you more critical strike damage, which scales better with a better gear, right? Because uh, that means the more damage you do, the more damage your tier set can amplify. I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say a spec called, I don't know, stone. The spec is called stone. Stone has two pieces and four pieces that gives you a flat amount of damage. It gives you 10k damage when you press disability. Fire Mage, it doesn't give any damage directly. It gives you a uh, critical damage increase, especially the four piece when you pop your combustion, right? Which makes it the better gear you have, the more damage you do, the more damage four piece can give you. Does that make sense? So, that being the case, you can expect once you get a lot of gear on Fire Mage to, to do a lot of them. A lot of them. Um. I think I think the, the biggest thing, like for example, if SKB worked with a four piece of fire mage, it would be insane. I would pretty love to see that if if SKB worked well. Um, let's move forward. I think for the top rankings, a lot of like a lot a lot less stuff has changed, but I'm gonna go over it. A retribution power in next in line, in my opinion, one of the, the specs people are sleeping on. 
very high burst damage one of the best mid utilities in a game uh one of the only utility that uh, one of the only spec that can give you a external defensive cooldown as, as a as a melee uh you're very very tanky you have amazing uh profile as well i guess the fact that you cannot really have a hybrid build hurts the most um but given the fact you have immunity it can also save you also if the legendary turns out to be really good i believe you might be the top of a plus tier depending on how good the legendary tuning is it depends that's why i'm gonna put it in the middle of a plus because we don't have any knowledge on legendary but if that turns to be really really good then i think like um <clears throat> i guess the distribution can be like around here right if that if that makes more sense um uh, next in line enhanced shaman enhanced shaman currently performs amazing in mythic plus i think you have one of the stronger uh five to eight targets i guess five to seven targets damage profiles especially like okay three three to seven targets you, you feel amazing you did a lot of damage which is always a driving factor to be placed higher you have the best photo damage in the game i don't think any class can come close to you um you're very very surprised by that as well overall the only weakness on enhanced right now is mass aoe when you pull like 10 plus mobs together like 10 12 plus mobs together uh or have something that does a lot of damage to you uh durability is an issue those two things are the only i guess main pain points of the spec which i believe if they fix that i don't think enhanced will really be any anything anything you know to complain about but i think overall you're pretty solid <clears throat> so if you're if you enhance main right now you'll be happy about it um all right boys uh last class to be available in a plus tier and it's astarok again astarok got some uh minor adjustments on behalf of this single target now they're gonna do a more st especially with the four piece they'll go both by 150 percent uh if it's like only one target which is pretty good overall i'm surprised of how well uh us are handling the buffs right now they're feeling quite well mythic plus amazing utility toolkit very 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 tanky spec and overall output is insane AOE, ST, 2 targets, 3, 5, 10, don't really matter. I say it's beast overall, everywhere. Uh, the reason why you're not a S tier, in my opinion, is because of just damage output. The glasses placed above you are, in my opinion, better than you. Now, surprise, surprise. Who would have guessed S tier Occumentation Evoker? Havoc. Outlaw. I don't think anybody's surprised but i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna just uh tell you why outlaw rogue got recently buffed by the way uh sinister strike was recently buffed which i think it's pretty good uh but overall they're currently feeling amazing mythic plus in all cases it don't matter how many mobs you're playing the only disadvantage of outlaw right now is having to do mass aoe like when you pull like 10 12 mobs at a time you're cut pretty much uh, most of the time so you can't really dish out more damage uh, which is fine anything else there is no second opinion uh, outlaw is absolutely nuts in consistent damage i don't think anybody can come close to you Havoc on the other hand is very very strong burst wise damage even though you got nerfed a little bit i don't think any class can come close to your burst you do astronomical numbers uh in AOE, st as well two three five targets it don't really matter high mobility better defenses good good um good self-sustain as well i mean there isn't really anything that that, uh, that i would like uh, i would like to have more from home uh, havoc right now insanely well the uh, reward class right now that is tankier than before which is impressive to be made but yeah uh, and also you can have a network walk immunity which is absolutely nuts augmentation evoker nothing to say about Oak evoker i think it's really 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 insane i don't see any group without ok walker even on like 20 plus keys i mean sure maybe not even on 20 keys plus but on a high keys must class on low keys maybe not not, not, not as necessary i guess uh the only disadvantage of ok walker is to rely on other people to do damage instead of you which in my opinion it's okay uh but something that i would like to avoid in the future uh ok walker can give you damage give you defensives uh also has good damage himself overall i don't think anybody will knock out that spec out of the s tier if there's only one spec that I will, i'm 100 percent sure is going to remain meta it's going to be ok walker i don't think any other spec can come close to that plus ok walker insanely valuable and good but i think 
So in case uh, they didn't work, you might, I don't see it going down S tier. Now, while well, Havoc and Outlook could go down S tier if they get nerfed. That's what I think, boys. <clears throat> I think this is the uh, update that I want to tell you.